Number A is the trade secret. Yes, sir. Um, so I last um, yeah, we have to go there. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, I really do say spelling, I'm excused for, but I'll tell you. What's the best spelling? Right? Uh, <laughs> what did I do? Um, Alex or piano, you can spell it as well. Piano. Is that uh, a name? Yeah. Forgot. And my last one. Uh, I'll take one more for everyone's name. <laughs> it's a combination of I can't see and I can't tell. Thank you, brother. All right. How many people got A as an alpha? Not one A, well, okay. B as in broccoli? C as in Caroline. D as in Dogwood. Couple of brave souls. E as in Ellen. A and E. We're going to eliminate it. Okay. If I have a production possibilities curve, like over here, how do I show there's a progress only in the production of rice on my curve? The uh, not the curve would go up, like the curve would shift upwards. Like this? Yeah. It would stay, that point would stay, and then it would go to a higher. This is rice, this is computer. Oh, oh, sorry, but they would be further out. Okay, so you want me to do something like that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. If I do that, is it going to cost me more rice to make more, to make the same amount as computers than before I shifted? It is going to be more rice, right? Because it's because it's bowed out, right? So the opportunity course. Um, for making 10 computers is going to increase, right? Okay. Now, conversely, what's gonna happen the other way? It's gonna, it's gonna decrease, right? So you got D, increase, decrease. Now, you guys are a lot smarter than me, so you probably figured these things out, but I like to always graph them out and then this way, less memorization, more kind of figuring it out. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. Who's in charge of prayer? Let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God, and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
God, thank you for our first full day of school. Pray for many more throughout this year where we can learn and engage in our community. Um, thank you for this day, and we pray for everything that is to come. Amen. St. John Baptist, so so pray for us. So Jesus, for our heart, in our hearts. Thanks for praying for full days of school, Peter. Yeah. Um, do you know when the first full cycle, non-interrupted of school no, is? February. February. You're like the president. You could change that, right? Huh? That's insane. February. It is. It's um. If you look at a public school time-wise, they have forty more academic days than we do. Well, not we, because that's why I put in a six day. It's really to try to take some of those days away. You know, otherwise, like, we'd be going through this like a uh, wild plan. All right. Anyhow, um, today you should be reading pages 19 to 26. 27. Now, I'll do a review Wednesday night. Tomorrow, I'll send you out a Zoom link um, for at 7.45 p.m. On your topics page, it says chapter one outline, chapter two outline. That would be the outline to follow the review. I think it's easier to do it with my outline because that's what I follow. You can do whatever you want. There's a practice quiz one and a practice quiz two up for chapters one and two. Well, only I think, I only think it's 12 questions, but it's six questions from chapter one and six from chapter two on the actual quiz. The practice I gave you like 12 of each. There's a couple of things. Like in practice quiz one, Mancou took the business cycle out of chapter one. So there's a there's a question there. It's not going to be on your test. And then in practice quiz two, I did make you read the appendix of chapter two. So there's a question about shifting demand. You don't have to know that. Okay. They won't be on your test. But anyhow, I'll be here Wednesday. Then Thursday, I'll be in room 108 at 745. Same review, just different times, trying to give you the alternatives. Now, I do a lot of research on how the brain learns, because I think as a teacher, that's like an important thing for me to know. So you remember things best when you study them and then go to sleep, okay? I only say this because like we have the quiz seventh period and a lot of you have free periods before that. And you'll say, I'm gonna study my free period, which is third period. And you will, but you will not remember it as well as if you studied it the night before. Now, my suggestion would be you study it the night before and you use your free period to either do homework or brush up, just quick review. But I wouldn't say to go in and try to study it that period, okay? Um, that, that would be all the research. Now, I also say, some of you have figured this out, like, and if it's working and you're crushing, just do whatever the heck you're doing. But, I am just wanted to point out the research. Um, I'd also give the, my best friend in the house my phone while I was studying and tell him that. You know, I have to tell my best friend in the house, my wife, not to let him go into the refrigerator. Um, so stop, because I'm not trying to be the fattest teacher at Calvert Hall. Who would that? I don't know. I think I could win that, but that's for a different year. All right, anyhow. Here was the feedback, 8.5 out of 10. Um, it was better than last year, so that's good. Um, here are some of the things they had questions on, so I'll quickly go over. Equality, just realize, if government's trying to make um, income equal, it has to tax from the rich and give to the poor. So when you tax from the rich, and the rich then feel lack of incentive to make more money because they're just paying it in taxes, it makes them less efficient. Um, the factors of production, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. Why not money? Because money doesn't make things. Money buys things. So like if I had a dollar bill, 
I put it on the table, it's not going to make it. If I have a machine, it can. If I have labor, it can. So the fact that it's a production made things. Do you need all four? No. How do you calculate marginal benefits? Peter, how much would you pay for this market? 50 cents. That's the marginal benefit of the market. It's what you're willing to pay. Now, you might have needed this marker, but if I said the second marker, it might have only been a quarter. That would be the marginal benefit for the second. All right, positive versus normative. Unemployment is 3%. That's positive. Biden's economic policy is why unemployment is so low. That's normative. That's argumental. Your GPA is 3.5. That's positive. Why is it that way? Someone might say you're a good teacher. Someone might say you study. Someone might say you're naturally smart. Someone might say we're easy graders. Someone might say we're hard graders. All of those are normative. By the way, I think we have tremendous great inflation in Calvert Hall, but that's just. Capital stock, things that make things. All right. Machines, factories, ovens. Now, capital stock is building that up, like having a lot of that in a country. Obviously, if you have more machines, more factories, you could make more things. That's why it shifts the production possibilities per that. You have a question? Okay. And then opportunity cost versus trade offs. If you're coming to the review Wednesday night, you could be eating, you could be working, you could be gaming. You could be studying for something else. You could be sleeping. You could be hanging out with friends. All of those are trade-offs. The one, the best one, gaming, that would be the opportunity course. Are you all going to have the same opportunity course? No. You're not going to have the same trade-offs either. Trade-offs are everything you give up. Opportunity course is the next best thing to the decision. Well, Anything up here need more clarity? I think there were two more. Shortage versus scarcity. Shortage is temporary. Scarcity is forever. Why? And we, in the United States, we take a lot of things for granted. Like, we don't think of water as scarce because you don't turn on your water, your water and have none. But there's a scarcity. There's not an unlimited supply of water in the world. Right. Then someone suggested multiple choice practice. I will do that once we get kind of rolling. Okay. All right. I guess we're good. We did this, right? Yes. We did that. We did the factors of production, right? Okay. We rolled in this class. Okay. So we're ready for micro versus macro. All right. I'm going to put this up and tell you don't write as much. Micro firms and households, small units. That's what we're doing first. We're doing micro. Like it's like a reason focus on like firms and households. Macro, that's looking at the whole country. So when you talk about unemployment in the United States, macro, inflation in the United States, macro, economic growth, macro. Invariably, one person will ask me the second semester, like, when are we going to learn micro after we spent the semester learning it? But that's okay. All right. We good? All right, now, accountants only use or only look at explicit cost. An explicit cost is something that you pay out of your pocket. Think rent, think um, wages. If I go to the store and I buy food, that's an explicit cost, right? It's coming right out of my pocket. And that's all accounts think of. When they think of cost, 
They only think of explicit costs. But we're not accountants here, we're economists. So we're gonna think of explicit and implicit costs. I'm gonna put up the definition. Implicit costs, they're opportunity costs that occur by even me giving up my time or other income. But it's not coming out of my pocket. I'll let you jot that down and then I'll give you an example. I am a teacher that makes 50,000 a year. I could be a lawyer and make 200,000. The 150,000 that I give up, that's an implicit course. Does that come out of my pocket? No, I'm not paying anyone 150,000. It's what I've given up to teach. Our school, is on this property. Say our school earns 100,000 a year. Just made up the number. It's a non I don't think our school even makes money. But 100,000 a year. If we knock Calvert Hall down and put apartment houses, it could be worth 10 million. The difference with the 10 million minus 100,000 would be the implicit cost. Now, Economists then are always going to think companies make less money than accountants because they're taking in the implicit course. All right, any questions on explicit versus implicit course? We do a lot more of this in Unit 3 um, when we talk about firms, but just kind of whetting your appetite for it. Yeah, what did Paint Manning, by the way, I think he owns, does he own um, Papa John's? I think he owns Papa John's Pizza Place. He's got some. All right, circular flow. I put this in your notes, right? Yes. All right. What's missing from the circular flow? What big entity? What? Yeah, the government. And we'll put the government in when we do maximum. Okay? All right. So, the product market, think Amazon, DC, anywhere you buy things is the product market. Okay. The Cardinal Shop. So, in the product market, households, which are us, demand, we demand products and firms supply, all right? So the inside is households demanding goods and services, firms supply. I should also say the product and factor market are always gonna be opposite each other as is households and firms. I go, uh, and buy a computer at the product market, I spend money, firms bring in revenue. Now, firms need workers. They demand labor from the factory market. Who supplies it? We are, we're the labor, we're households. So we supply. Now, Peter works, his firm demands his labor, and in return, they give him wages. All right? 
His wages becomes his income. He takes his income, spends it at the product market, and then firms make revenue. So this, the outside circular flow is how money goes through the system. Okay. And revenue, which is kind of every dollar spent, is equal to income. So every dollar someone's spending, someone else is earning the dollar. So that's kind of like one of the things the circular flow likes to tell you. Now, what could they ask you on a test? They could put A, all these A, B, C, D, and say if A is households, what is C? Well, it's the, it has to be firm because they have to be opposite. They might ask, like I just said, like something, um, what is the transaction if Peter is working at a computer place and they pay him his wage? Well, it would be E and F. Is that some work? Now, a sad thing to say is the circular flow does not really show up much after this unit. Um, but you have to know. Any questions on? Yes, sir. Here, it's goods and services, and the fact the market, it's factors of production. Here, they're demanding, say, labor, because that's the easiest one to think about, and households are supplying. And since in a capitalist economy, households own the factors of production. Okay. Go. Are you good? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, so, and I wouldn't even jot this down. I, I just put this up here. Like economic models explain concepts. They, they just they, they generate graphs. And most of the economic uh, models we'll use are graphs, all right? Um, production possibilities curve will be the first one. Now, something about the production possibilities curve, it's in micro and macro. So. You get like two for the price of one here. Um, so you don't really have to learn it again there. All right. It's a model that shows alternative ways that economy uses scarce resources. So production possibilities curve shows scarcity, right? Because you can make computers so nice. You can't make unlimited. If you make as many computers as you can, you make no rice. All right, there's trade-offs, because as you go through this production possibilities curve, if you're making more of one, you're making less of the other. It shows you opportunity costs, which we're gonna do. Um, so those are the things, it, you know, and deficiency. Nathan, how does it show efficiency? Uh, if the economy has a point on the curve, then it's efficient. If it's inside the curve, it's efficient. And then it's outside, it's not possible. Okay, so anything on the curve would be efficient. Right. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then just assumptions, only two goods can be produced. And again, I won't even write this down. You know there's more than two goods, but we use two goods to simplify the model so we could understand. All right, at the start, we're assuming full employment. And like Nathan said, that means everything is on the curve to start, right? Fixed resources and fixed technology because Otherwise, anything outside the curve is unattainable at the start before we do any shifting 
for anything like that. It would be inefficient. Big unemployment. Okay. Factory closing down. Empty seats at a restaurant. Okay. All right, here is your production possibilities curve. Nathan already has told us A, B, C, D, and E all are efficient. One is not more efficient than the other. They're all maximizing resources. Okay? The only difference is the trade-offs. Like at E, we're making more computers and no bikes. At A, we're just focusing on bikes. All right? Again, not one is better than the other. Where you want to be on A, B, C, D, and E is really what society wants. You know, if you're in a society that values computers, you'll probably be at D. All right. Then we've talked about anything inside is inefficient and unemployment. So like a recession would be inside the curve. And then anything outside is unattainable with present day resources. Give me one of the four shifts this of this curve. Uh, like, uh, how do I get from like B to G? Uh, just keep going. Go, give me one. Change in capital stock. Change in capital stock, give me another. Change, change in technology, give me another. Change in human resources. Change in quantity or quality of resources. All right. So we got change in quantity or quality of resources, change in technology, change in human resources, change in technology. Okay. Thursday, you got to know that way. You know, five times. Okay. What can you tell me by the shape of this curve? Oh, uh, resources aren't easily adaptable. Okay. Resources are not easily adaptable. And if they're not easily adaptable, what am I going to know about the opportunity cost? So can we get five hands going up here? We got one. What will I know about the opportunity? We got two. Three. Again. Come on. Oh, oh yeah. Go. The, the response to switch your resources to something else is higher. Yeah, the opportunity, of course, will be increasing, right? Yes. Okay. Good. All right. And by the way, I just remember like last year, like they knew nothing at this time about, so you guys know a lot and we haven't even really went over a lot of things. So the way ahead in that, that, that thing. All right, the opportunity cost of moving from A to B will be how many bikes? Two bikes. Two bikes, okay? All right, I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes, do two, three, four, and five on your own. There's no real place to do it. You can just jot no. it down anywhere.
Would you like another 30 seconds? Luke, what do you got for number two? I got six computers and seven bikes. Okay. So when you go in from B to D, you'll just be concerned about bikes. Okay. So it's 12 and five, so seven bikes. Okay. Good. Vincent, what do you got for number three? So you go in D6 to B2, four computers. All right. Who's got number four? Who feels good about number four? Aaron? By the way, did I say your name right? Yeah. That's shocking. Okay. Nothing. Peter, what'd you have? I was going to say none, except something like that. Nothing. Because you're going from inefficient to inefficient. So, so nothing. Okay. Very good. Where you go from inefficient to inefficient. Not inefficient to inefficient. Right? F to C. Is that what they said? Yeah. 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 Inefficient to inefficient. Okay. All right. And then um Tim, what do we got for the last one? I'm uh, huh? not currently attainable. Okay, not currently attainable. Well, Tim, what's one of the four things that could get you there? Okay. By the way, Tim, how boring of a life do I lead that I have to look for like stupid things like that to put in the I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. That's why I'm uh, I'm starting to think your life is as boring as mine. It's okay. All right. Here we go. What is the opportunity for us to look here? Increasing constant or a constant? Uh, constant it's a constant opportunity for us. If the opportunity cost is constant, Jack, what is the graph going to look like? So it could be bowed? Oh, yeah. Straight. Okay. So if it's constant, we know resources are easily adaptable. Think pizza and calzone. You probably need the same type of food, the same type of skills. They make like you make pizza in that place. Would you try to make them? No? They won't let you eat it, right? That's a shame. That is a great skill. Okay. All right. So resources are easily adaptable, constant, and your graph is going to look like a straight line on the production possibility curve. Now, they can show you a graph with a straight line and ask you, you need to know it's constant and easily adaptable resources. All right. Now, the next thing that's going to come up is increasing. So increasing opportunity cost, as you produce more of the good, the opportunity cost will increase. And like that's what we saw in the um, in the drill. When it blew out, we had an increasing opportunity cost. At any time you see a bowed out curve, increasing opportunity cost, resources are not easily adaptable. Now, 90% of the curves turn out to be bowed out. But you do you do have to know you do have to know both of them. Okay. Oh, I, it says bowed out. I put concave because sometimes they use that. Like I don't know.
All right. So you want the next slide. All right. This one's looking for the per unit opportunity cost of moving from A to B. Give everyone like 30 seconds. See, could you come up? Was everyone good, by the way? Did everyone get what was on this? Do you need this for a second? Yes, sir. I think it's not on this. It is. You probably can't see it. Okay. What what's your name? Giles. Tim, right? Yeah. All right. Tim, if you look um at NN2, it's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Uh, yeah, you just probably can't see it. Tim. It's right there. Make the content and write your name in, and you'll be able to see. It. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. Dude, Tim. Do you need glasses? <laughs> All right. Um, this might be actually a, a good place to spot. Tim, if you go home tonight and someone in your house goes, "What did you learn in economics today?" You'll tell them. Um, yeah, um, what? Yeah, like Okay, all right. You're good there, Tim. Um, uh, Ryan, what were you telling? Um, I was telling that those who go now went to the opportunity to Increases? Yes. Okay, great. Sebastian? Uh, if you have a all right. And uh, Carlos? My brilliant study of Bernie also was one of them. Okay. Can you then take a minute, fill out the little sheet, any questions or suggestions, and then put in the box? And once you're finished, you're free to go. By the way, on the topics page is a video of every class, just so you know. I don't know.